Do you remember the time when I told you MK4S, the definition of speed? Now this is core one and it is that speed plus 20%. I'm not joking, but new definition of speed, I guess, is here. And just to let you know, this thing is 25 kilos. Not too bad. Regarding its speed compared to MK4S, if you look at this chart, this model is printed with MK4S in 4 hours and 27 minutes, but with Core 1, it is printed in 3 hours and, in 3 hours and 42 minutes. It's pretty impressive. And if you've seen my other video, which is published at the same time with this for the unboxing and everything, setup of this machine is almost plug and play, and within 10 minutes, you can start your very first 3D print with this machine. It is pretty fast to put together. I mean, there's nothing to put together almost except the LCD screen, which I also put the LCD screen in a very different way than the manual it says because I didn't read it for the unboxing excitement, but I'm gonna show you. And in that video, I turned the printer upside down, which actually wasn't necessary because I didn't read it. You just open this door over here and you pull this plate up because it's magnetic and you screw it from here and then pull it back down. That's it, but yeah, I missed that part. But eventually I showed you guys under the printer. The very first thing that grabs my attention is this print volume. When you look at it, it looks like a cramped space compared to MK4S because it's a closed volume. However, this has 30% more print volume than MK4S and it is drastically using the same bed. And if you look at the numbers for XYZ, it is 220 by 250 by 270 millimeters. And you might ask yourself, did Purusha change the build plate size? No, they didn't. This is the build plate of MK4S and it is exactly the same when it comes to the build plate. So there's nothing changed for the size of the build plate, but they squeezed a couple more centimeters from there and here and extended the Z height. That's it. So you can technically use your old build plates with Core 1. So according to Porsche, Core 1 is taking 50% less space than MK4S. It might look like an illusion, but I think they are talking about the bounding box dimensions that is required to eat the space. So that checks out. If you also look at this comparison from the side view, MK4S takes more space in this axis as well. So when you look at the boundary box dimensions, I think 50% makes sense. Another thing that grabbed my attention immediately is this grill over here, the ventilation grill. So this enables you to print PLA and patchy with door closed and you can shut this one off, shut the door off. You can print ASA, ABS, PCCF, nylon, all those kind of cool stuff inside this machine. One thing that we need to talk about, which bothers me a little bit, I assume it will bother some of you too, is this bar over here. This bar over here, like I can use it probably for time lapse and anything to attach the camera, but this bar over here, why? Uh, I know why. It is for the structural integrity of this machine, which is built like a tank, but fe feel like it's like new BMW where they have that interesting bar that changes the look, but that's another topic. It is there, so it might uh, take time for us to get used to that bar. I just wanted to talk about it. When you look at this picture, what do you see? Two different 3D printers, right? The MK4S and Core 1. They don't look like they can transform, right? But you can take your MK4S with an upgrade kit, turn it to Core 1. Uh, when I first hear that, I was like, what? It is, it is interestingly possible. They have the kit conversion and everything. So you can basically pay less to upgrade your MK4S into core one. I think this is freaking awesome. Maybe rather than buying the entire thing, you can wait for the upgrade kit and buy the upgraded kit and turn your MK4S into core one, which still blows my mind, which also good in terms of Purusha showcasing. They are always taking care of their old machines, allowing their community to build upon their old machines to get the new machine systems. I don't know if I will make a video about an upgrade kit from MK4S to Core 1 in the future, but I think it's going to be a challenge. Fun challenge like building a Lego 
I believe, but it's going to be a challenge. You need to disassemble the entire thing to put this one together. But I know most of you guys will love that experience. So stay tuned for that. One of the biggest features coming with this machine is the active chamber management. I really like it. By using the heat coming from the heated bed and encapsulating in this volume space, they are able to control the chamber up to 55 Celsius degree. And the fan, as you guys see right over there, allows them to control the temperature precisely so that they can dump the extra hot air outside or keep it in. So by, by closing the grills on the top, you are creating a fully closed environment which enables this active chamber control. This over here is a really nice touch because GE28 is where you home all the axes, then you print, 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 lots of cheat code, M84 where you disable the steppers. This is a really nice touch, I really like it. Another really nice touch that I want to show you guys, when you start to print, this light over here comes out. And I think this is really cool. And I also showed it in one of my Instagram posts, which makes a super cool like spaceship. But this reminds me of the Knight Rider going left and right, left and right. I, I hope we can access this and make it go left and right, left and right. It might be extremely cool. All right, let's connect it to my Wi-Fi. Now I'm my push app, we are going to go to the menu, click the setup Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi wizard, click core one, eh, don't download that. And I'm gonna put my Wi-Fi name and Wi-Fi password in here. And after I put my um, Wi-Fi name and the password, we are in the NSF. So we're just gonna go tap it at the back of the printer. All right. And it says Wi-Fi setup. Now there is a QR code, I'm going to read that QR code with my phone. Now the printer will show up in my printer, is over here, the Core 1 is right in here. Yes, I connected my Core 1 to Wi-Fi and I'm using the app to control it and send prints and etc. Uh, but what is really good about this, you can totally use this machine offline. You can unplug the Wi-Fi module so you don't have to deal with any privacy issues from the Wi-Fi module itself. So that is the one of the best thing about the Porsche machine is you can just like disable it by unplugging the module itself. Yeah, since we connected to the Wi-Fi, let's connect the camera add-on and watch it from our phone. This is the camera that we are going to install for Porsche Core 1. It's an add-on. Uh, it's going to be fun. I just remove the camera cap. We're going to put it in. There are like LED lights over here and this is the antenna. What's good is this is uh, attaching with magnets. So this entire thing magnetically attaches to that corner and that's it. USB-C connection. I just plugged it in and I'm going to put it in like this. Here is the camera. I think I can show you a better view. Wait, is that it? Do I need to do anything else uh, for this camera in here is enabled? I think this is it. I, let me just check out the app. And here is my printer section. I'm gonna click core one, add camera. It's already connected. Web camera, I think it's a Wi-Fi camera. All right, I put my password and everything and click continue. Now there's a, a QR code. We need to place this in front of the camera. All right, this might take some time, but reset the camera. Start scanning. Starting scanning, okay scanned i think this is connected and i'm gonna click view i edit the camera yes yes i can see the camera it's in here nice nicely done and put my finger here let's see if it's going to update is this live streaming Oh, it came. Now I can see my hand. There's a delay a little bit in there, but the camera works. So I just added the camera in there. So that's one of the add-on. The other add-on is going to come to the filtration system at the back of it. And we can always add the MMU3 for multicolor printing. And there's going to be a dry box coming in. I think it's going to attach here or the other side. And there's also swing arm that's available open source right now in the website of printables. Obviously with all these add-ons and exoskeleton, this is modular and adjustable and all these magnets can attach to it. So you can do a lot of stuff with it and you can even do funny stuff with it too. So fishy.
Also remember these things, uh, these pins where the nylon is attached, stuck under them. I also find an extra nylon rivet uh, pin things. So I can remove these and put these one in and uh, solve the problem. So what about the extruder head? It's almost similar to MK4S, but there is with one difference, which is the which is the nozzle cooler that is 360 degree over there. It's coming from the back of the next extruder, so it's located right in there. And yes, we have the next extruder high flow nozzle, so that's also attached in there. So it's going to print very fast. That increases the volumetric flow rate of the filament. Of course, we cannot end this video without looking at the prints and here is a light tower. That 360 degree cooling is really working. It's magic. You guys can see this is 3D printed without any support materials. And another print here is a case that's pretty deep printed with wood. So this is a wooden case block and some other small 3D prints that I have with different materials and uh, here is a little pusher dog. And here is my favorite that I 3D printed with PLA. And this is the best is starfish with all these wiggly wiggly structures printed in four hours. Really nice. We will print more stuff and torture it more. We just completed looking at the Prusa Core 1 together and there are like five big summary steps if you want to take a look. Five best things about Prusa Core 1. Number one, this is a fully closed core XY, so you can control the temperature in the chamber and you can print various materials up to nylon, PCCF, ABS, ASA and many more. That's really great about this machine. Second important summary point, this machine is extremely fast. So remember I was saying that MK4S definition of speed etc. This is 20% more faster than that machine because it's Core XY. 360 degree cooling with high flow nozzle is really also hitting the point increasing the volumetric flow rate. Third important summary point this is obviously 30% more print volume than MK4S by encapsulating 50% less regarding a bonding box dimensions. That's also really cool. Number four, this machine is very fast to assemble and put together and within 10 minutes, you can start your very first print, which is really nice. And the last summary point, number five is this machine can be upgraded. It's modular, you can change things, you can add a lot of add-ons and you can bring your MK4S to core one structure. I think these are all great points. I am excited to continue printing more stuff with this machine. So you will see lots of rails and shorts and TikToks with this beautiful thing. So far, so good. This video is finished. If you haven't watched the unboxing video, go check that one out. It's also published at the same time. All the links that you need are in the bio. If you want to support your 3D printing doctor, don't forget to use my affiliate links when you're buying your Core 1 if this video impressed you and inspired you to get one. If not, no problem at all. Unfortunately, there's no discount this time when you use the code. It's just the affiliate link for me to get more filament. And yeah, as always, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to 3D Printing Doctor's YouTube channel. And I will see you guys on the next videos, shorts and other stuff. More coming soon. Stay tuned. This weekend is busy.